So I hope you've already watched the first teaser for the movie Alien Romulus. At first glance, there's nothing new or informative in this short video, and perhaps you're right, but I found a lot of interesting things for myself. The teaser is imbued with the atmosphere of the first film. Enclosed spaces, narrow corridors, even the music. Already from the first frames, it becomes clear that director Romulus Fedor Alvarez has created another horror and science fiction. In the movie, we probably won't see actions of the alien Romulus occurring between Ridley Scott's original film and James Cameron's sequel. But you already know all that. I, however, want to delve into what no one has noticed yet. And I'll start with the most important. Face huggers. Yes, there will be many of them. A whole swarm of face huggers. But only two details, or rather, two differences, are important to me. The first difference is the color. If you stop the frame, zoom in, and magnify, it's evident that these face huggers are too dark. In Alien from 1979, the face hugger was white, the same color used by James Cameron in his film. In the second film, you can clearly see the color of the face hugger. It's definitely white and not like the ones shown in the teaser. We know that there are two types. The first is the standard face hugger, which could infect a person with a regular centimorph. And the second is the so-called royal. That's the one that's dark in color. You can compare it yourself. From my videos, you know that the royal specimen carries several embryos. And the main goal of such a face hugger is to create a queen. And in this frame, they showed us a large number of them. And all of them are royal, which is quite strange. Even in the following frames, they show us royal face huggers. But there's one big but. During the jump, I didn't notice any membranes. Perhaps they are there, but in such quality, it's quite difficult to make out. The royal specimen differs not only in color, but also in membranes, which they use for planning and flight. This increases the range and accuracy of the jump. So it turns out that it's either a new species or the filmmakers violated the canon. But in his interviews, Alvarez repeatedly stated that he would strictly adhere to the lore. He respects the project greatly, and with his new film, he'll consider all the fans' opinions. Therefore, I don't think that Alvarez made a mistake. Nevertheless, this question remains open to me. Unfortunately, the quality of the teaser doesn't give us the opportunity to examine the face hugger in detail. But considering all the information, personally, I think it's a standard type, as the royal face hugger is quite rare. It was only shown once in the movie Alien 3, and such a huge quantity of this type seems impossible. The second moment is the removal of the face hugger from the girl's face, which is impossible according to canon. We know this from the first movies. When removing the face hugger, it defends itself by applying physical force, using its tail as a weapon, and begins to strangle the host. If you try to kill it, make an incision, or perform any surgical intervention, the face hugger secretes acid that corrodes everything. Of course, the person will die from it. In the second movie, we also heard that scientists managed to remove two face huggers, but during this operation, the person died. Two are alive, the rest are dead. Surgically removed before embryo implantation. Subject Marichek, John Jay, died during the procedure. They killed him taking it off. So this scene personally puzzled me. Firstly, it's evident that the face hugger is not resisting. Its limbs resemble fingers and do not react. Conclusion, either it's dead, which again is impossible, and I'll explain why further, or it has somehow been incapacitated. I can speculate that a strong android could remove the face hugger, or the person is already dead. And the face hugger finds the host uninteresting, since the embryo can only develop in a living organism. In both cases, what unsettles me is that the proboscis is inside the person. Using this organ, the face hugger places the embryo in the host and supplies air to the host's body. After the impregnation stage, the proboscis reflexively retracts. In the movie Alien Covenant, this moment was briefly shown. Referring to all the information we have at this moment, the process of embryo implantation is not yet complete. The face hugger has only managed to introduce a paralytic substance, which is necessary to prevent the host from resisting. Hence the girl lying unconscious. But then, how it was removed from her face, I still don't understand. If you look closely, for a fraction of a second, the tail of the face hugger is visible on the right, and it too, like the limbs, is inactive. Quite strange, what can I say about this scene? I have two versions. The first one, the director violated the cannon for the sake of an outstanding and repulsive shot. Previously, the process of proboscis insertion was not shown to me, and we could only guess how disgusting it was. And personally, I found this shot visually appealing. Indeed, it's disgusting as Giger loved. It's his idea of a sexual act shown in all its glory, and perhaps someone even got a thrill at that moment. For example, Randy Marsh. It's his theme. We know about his love for all kinds of creatures. But still, I don't believe that Alvarez violated the canon for the sake of a beautiful shot. I have a second version. After the impregnation stage, the face hugger introduces an absorbent at the end, 
which neutralizes the effects of the sedative, allowing the host to wake up and continue living, not remembering what actually happened to them. Most likely, the facehugger successfully introduced the embryo and all the chemical substances, including the immunodepressant. Its main task and mission are completed, and it loosened its grip, stopped choking the throat with its tail, and was about to introduce the absorbent. It was at this moment that it was removed from the victim's face, and I currently have no other explanations. Third question, who is this mysterious guy? I think he's an android. His gaze reminds me of David. He looks surprised, but there's no fear or horror on his face from what he's seen. He's observing what's happening. In the next frame, the synthetic closes the door, thereby saving everyone from the swarm of face huggers. In other words, he acts rationally and doesn't panic. The guy is closest to the face hugger, but it jumps on the girl because the synthetic isn't of interest to it. Behind them, we can see two more people, an unknown man and the main character of the film, played by Kaylee Spaney, the new Ripley, in other words, the girl who loves Vin Diesel's style. This is actress Eileen Yu, and she's had the least luck, not only with the hairstylist, but also with the face hugger, as it chose her. Perhaps in the next frame, they remove the face hugger from Eileen's face. Most likely not Kaylee, but it could be another girl. The heroine, Isabella Merced. The teaser is trying to confuse us as much as possible. I no longer trust the insiders who previously claimed that there would be two androids in Romulus. They also said that the events of the film Romulus would take place on a planet and that the crew are space tourists. But I can't ignore the new leaks as some of them have found confirmation in the teaser and set photos. And they all say the same thing. The alien from the first film did not die. Ripley ejected it into open space but Ridley Scott himself previously stated that the creature is capable of surviving in open space. The theory that the Xenomorph from the first film survived is not new. It has existed for decades. There's even a comic about it and numerous fanfics. The alien can enter a state of suspended animation at extremely low temperatures and survive in that state for decades. The Wayland yutani Corporation's space laboratory managed to find the same alien in open space years later. The station is called Renaissance, divided into two separate blocks, Romulus Laboratory and Remus Stationary Compartment. Photos confirm that scientists did indeed find the Xenomorph. It curled up into a ball and awaited Alvarez to make a new film about it. Scientists managed to synthesize black liquid from the Xenomorph's body, something similar to the pathogen from the movie Prometheus. Like with the synthetic David, they managed to recreate the experiments of the engineers. They created Ovomorphs and the Xenomorph itself. There is currently no information about the Queen, the Romulus Laboratory is separated from the residential sections of Ramus for safety reasons, but as per genre tradition, there was a leak and all the people on Renaissance were killed by xenomorphs. The distress signal was responded to by space cleaners, a team of seven people. Young people were engaged in looting and collecting space junk, and then they stumbled upon an entire station. That was a success, but as always, a surprise awaited them there. What happened next? We will find out from the film itself. It is unknown whether the process of xenomorph development as a species will be shown, and whether we will learn anything new about alien weaponry. With one certainty, I can say that the film utilizes retrofuturism. The Renaissance station is reminiscent of the Nostrum in some places, with narrow corridors and similar monitors. It's very cool. It's also evident that the director used the game Alien Isolation as material for inspiration. The facehugger swarm first appeared in this game, and frankly, it looks terrifying. We also see the use of flamethrowers. They could briefly distract the xenomorphs. This moment was also shown in the teaser. What will happen with the game Isolation next is unknown, but there's definitely a surprise in store for us. Of course, the parallel between the main characters is very well demonstrated. Kaylee bears a strong resemblance to Ripley, especially with the early version of the Pulse Rifle. This confirms that the events of the film take place before James Cameron's Aliens, where the weaponry was of a different model. There are even rumors that Alvarez might have used Ellen Ripley's daughter, Amanda Ripley McLaren, Kaylee Spaney portrays her. But these are just fan opinions, anything is possible. For me, it's not that important. I was, of course, waiting for the engineers. Someone mentioned seeing jockey suits on set, but I couldn't find any confirmation. Others claim that at the end of the film, a ship of engineers would arrive at the station and rescue Kaylee. But again, I think that's unlikely. Ridley Scott wouldn't allow Alvarez to use the engineers, but there's still hope. What do you think? Write in the comments.